Here's a weird one. One afternoon as Tom and Ellen arrived at the ranch after stopping in town, they had, saw a lot of commotion in one of their corrals, something kicking up, up a lot of dust. As they got closer, they could see that something was attacking the horses in the corral. And the horses were panicking. This unknown critter was perhaps 200 pounds, short, stocky, muscular. It looked like part dog, part hyena, but it had a big bushy red tail. Tom, as I mentioned, is a big game hunter. He'd never seen anything like this anywhere in the world and never even heard of a creature like this. But this thing was, was toying with the horses, not so much trying to eat them, but just toying with them and scaring the heck out of them, slashing its legs with its claws. And uh, then it sees Tom running at it, and it takes off up the hill. Poof, it's gone. Just disappears into thin air. Now, it wasn't their imagination. The legs of the horses were all clawed up and took weeks to heal. What else? Well, cue the UFOs, because there were a lot of them. The first one they saw on the property looked like a recreational vehicle, like a Winnebago. Now, on that property, the video you saw, there's only one road. There's only one way in and one way out, and the gate is always locked. So anybody comes into the property, they're going to know about it. Well, suddenly they see in the third homestead, they're the three homesteads in the property, they see these what look like headlights coming toward them. Or they think that they, maybe it's a, a Winnebago that somehow got stuck out on one of their pastures. Oh, gee, we'll go down and help the, help the guy. They start walking toward it, and then the lights start coming in their direction, start moving toward them. And then the lights start moving up, up and over the trees, and gone. Then they started seeing these flying refrigerators that generated these huge beams of light and made these loud noises like metal banging on metal. Tom and Ellen had a, a daylight sighting of a classic silver disc, a classic flying saucer, except this one seemed to generate an intense emotional response in them as they watched it. They were not afraid, they were elated, like almost giddy, way out of proportion for what was happening to them at the time. It kind of uh, an induced emotional state, and they would, uh, they would come to see this many more times. There were others that looked like F-117 stealth fighters, but they had these multicolored, like flashing Christmas lights around the, sh around the side. And they would hover over the property, not making a sound, and then just, boom, disappear. And then the orbs came. A at first, they were these little white lights flitting around in the darkness and in the trees and above the grass. And then they were followed by the red orbs that proved to be much more aggressive since they often fly into the cattle, flew into the cattle and scatter these herds. They would just run away in, in abject fear. And then these larger orange orbs that generated this intense light. Um, but these orange things that looked like they would hang in the, in the sky and they were like a, a sun. And then on occasion, Tom would watch them through binoculars um, or a telescope and he would see things flying in and out of them. He even on one occasion reported that he could see another sky on the other side, as if there was, this was some sort of a portal to somewhere else. Um, then came these blue ones, the blue meanies. Ruthless, manipulative, and as the family would learn, violent, confrontational, airborne menaces. Uh, these things would, uh, they also seemed to generate an emotional reaction, not only in, in people, but in animals. These things would fly among the horses, scare them just out of their mind. And then Tom and Ellen would try to come to the rescue. They'd get anywhere near these things. They looked like the size of a softball, glass encased, but with some kind of a bubbly, boiling looking liquid inside. And they, would, uh, they initiated this fear that just literally dropped them to their knees. Fear way at, now these, they'd already been through all kinds of stuff on this property, but these things, did something to them that seemed to induce an emotional state. And in fact, you know, we've theorized since that maybe it seemed to feed off of it. You know, many of you have heard bits and pieces about the animal mutilation mystery, of course. And my colleagues in the news biz have, have uh, accepted the explanation that there's nothing weird about it. And so the rest of us read these print stories and, and we see the explanations that it must be coyotes or mountain lions or, or um, scalpel wielding Beelzebubs or something like that. But it's not. If you know anything about Linda Howe's excellent work in that area, it does, the, the explanation doesn't fit. And it's not just cattle. It's uh, horses, deer, sheep, domestic pets, sliced up by these unknown surgeons. 
and for reasons we don't exactly understand. Well, it started happening to the Gormans, and just as it happened to other ranchers in that same area. These were high-end, genetically engineered stock, very expensive animals. Gorman's herd ranged in at any given time from 60 to 80 heifers and four prized bulls. It's his livelihood. It's everything to him. In the beginning, these, the animals were just lost, poof, gone. In one case, the tracks from a 1,200-pound cow led out into a snowbank, gone, done, like it was plucked out of the snow and taken into the sky. Uh, in another case, Gorman's son had checked on this cow in a field, and five minutes later, Tom found this cow sliced up, sliced into pieces, its rectum cored out by an incision that was six inches wide and 18 inches deep. No blood on the cow, no blood on the snow, no tracks anywhere. How do you do it, and why? Gorman's next door neighbor lost a bunch of uh, head as well. In one instance, this is, we'll call him Mr. Gonzalez, he saw one of his cows in a field separated from the rest of the herd, and he couldn't figure out how it, how it got out there since it's a secure fence and it should have been kept with the others. Well, when he got close, he saw this cow had two broken legs and was laying there shivering in shock in obvious pain. He runs back to the house to get a blanket and his gun, figuring he's going to put this thing out of its misery. He comes back out, the cow's gone. It didn't walk away, it has two broken legs. Goes back in the house, puzzled, looks out a little while later, there it is, again, same spot. He goes running back out with his gun, this time it has four broken legs. As if it had been dropped from a helicopter or from some other kind of vehicle, but of course he'd seen no helicopter or nothing else. Uh, there was an incident with, uh, with the four prized bulls. Tom and his, his wife are thinking, they, they start to feel that whatever this thing was, it seems to be able to read their minds and anticipate what they're doing. They said uh, they're gonna drive to town. They said, boy, if something happens to one of our bulls, we'll go under, we'll be in real trouble. 20 minutes later, they drive back. All four of the bulls that had been in this one corral are gone. They're panicking. They're running around, looking around for it. Well, in the, if you saw that video earlier, there's a shot of a, a metal trailer that's in that corral, and it's wired shut. He uses it for storage. Nobody ever goes in there. He peeks up at the top of this grate, just on an off chance, and there's all four of these bulls crammed into this trailer in like a trance. Now, you couldn't get one of these things in there. They're 2,000, 2,500 pounds. They're powerful. They're mean, uh, unruly. Somehow, somebody in a couple of minutes crammed all four of them into that one little trailer, and they did it without taking the do opening the door, because the wire that was there was still wired up. He yells to his wife, and it's as if it, these bulls come out of a trance. They wake up, they start kicking the hell out of the, the trailer. What do you make of this stuff? 